Welcome to the recap of episode 10 of Hell's Paradise. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you stay in the loop on all our dope upcoming videos. This one's got some major spoilers, but if you ain't bothered, then sit back and get ready to have a blast. Previously, our boy, Gabamaru, is in deep trouble. He's all battered and bloody, looking like he's about to kick the bucket. Suddenly, he's confronted by Fuchi and Gantetsusai. Now, these criminals start sizing each other up, trying to figure out who's tougher. Fuchi interrupts their little macho showdown, telling them that their brawl is pointless and ain't gonna solve squat. Instead, he suggests they gather info from Gabamaru without taking him out. Gabamaru, being no fool, realizes these dudes mean business. So he switches gears and does something unexpected. He gets on his knees and asks for an alliance. Now that takes guts. But Gantetsusai ain't buying it. He whips out his sword, thinking Gabamaru is pulling some sneaky tricks, and calls him out for being a coward. Then Fuchi pops the big question, why the heck did Gabamaru ask for an alliance? And guess what? Gabamaru spills the beans about the Tenson. That blows Fuchi and Gantetsusai's minds, and they can't believe what they're hearing. Fuchi's skeptical at first, but Gantetsusai decides to team up with Gabamaru, dead set on reaching Horai and taking on the Tenson. I mean, this makes sense because Gantetsusai has always been on the lookout for the strongest warriors. But there's a twist. Fuchi reminds Gantetsusai that he's Gabamaru's competition on this mission, but Gantetsusai couldn't care less about a pardon. He's got bigger plans, he wants to go down in history as a freaking immortal legend, and he's aiming to defeat the Tenson to make it happen. Fuchi, despite thinking Gantetsusai's ideas are downright ridiculous, gets intrigued by the whole idea of immortal beings. He's got a hankering to dissect them. So, with their goals aligned, Gabamaru, Gantetsusai, and Fuchi seal the deal and form their kick-ass alliance. So, Fuchi suggests that Gabamaru gives them the info, then he turns around, and bam. He's shocked to see Mei all grown up and hear her say his name. That gets Gabamaru pumped up, desperate to know if she's got the dirt on the Tencent's secrets and how to take them down. Mei spills the tea, saying the key to beating those suckers is this thing called Tao. But she's keeping it simple, dropping words like strong, weak, mind, body, and Tanden to explain it. Gantetsusai and Fuchi figure out that Tanden means the area below the navel. Just when things are heating up, the Sashin gang comes at them. Gantetsusai ain't playing and slices him up, thinking the best way to get Tao is to fight these monsters right. He even hoists Mei on his shoulder to guide him. But in the distance, Gabamaru spots a freaky monster that's not like the others. On the trip to Horai, Senta puts two and two together. Based on Hoko's info, he figures out that this island ain't the real deal. It's like a messed up mix of made up religions and cultures, sort of like Moro Makaya's crime of faking a religion to overthrow the Shogun. Senta thinks the ruler of this joint wants only flower transformed humans to go back to the mainland and that's gotta be a clue to finding the elixir and escaping this place. Yuziri is thinking Gabamaru and Mei might already be pushing up daisies, but Sajiri believes Gabamaru is alive because he's hellbent on reuniting with his wife. Hoko comes clean about this wicked power called Tao. Apparently, it's this crazy energy that flows through everything in the world, and guess what? The Tenson has got it on lockdown. Hoko drops the bomb that if you master this Tao stuff, you can be like a freaking god with insane powers. Meanwhile, Naruga thinks she can sneak up on Shion from behind and attack him with her sword, but she fails big time. Shion effortlessly intercepts her move, leaving her totally mind blown. So Shion straight up tells her that he ain't gonna teach her swordplay, even though she's all fired up to avenge Tenza. But Naruga ain't giving up as she begs Shion to show her his badass fighting skills because she can't bear to see her loved ones kick the bucket anymore. Shion opens up about how he can feel these waves that are present in everything around him, which helps him see stuff real clear. He explains that she's got to find a balance in her spirit to sense it, like having both anger and serenity at the same time. What I think is, Shion, Hoko, and Mei are all talking about the same thing, Tao. But each one experiences it in different ways. What do y'all think? 
Let me know in the comments below. So, Naruga knows she's not gonna sense the waves happen overnight, but she's persistent. She's like, teach me how to swing that sword, Xion. So Xion points out her sword swinging blunders and then puts on a show, demonstrating the right way to do it. Naruga is all confused, wondering if he's doing it on purpose or what. And get this, he chops up this Sashin enemy while still explaining stuff. Xion's like, I ain't gonna be your master, but you can watch me in action, and Naruga is down for that. She joins him, ready to learn and grow. Xion also realizes he's gotta level up his skills if he wants a fighting chance against the Tensin. While getting it on, Ratnatese starts pondering with Mew Dan about a wild idea. What if humans could escape the pit they're trapped in? Mew Dan shuts it down real quick, saying it's impossible. According to him, humans ain't got the strength to climb out, plus there's a whole wall of creepy things standing in their way. Chobei puts that to the test cause he ain't one to back down easily. He defies the odds and manages to haul himself and Toma out of that pit. Once they're free, Chobei declares his plan to seek revenge on the Tensons, and even though Toma ain't too thrilled about it, he goes along with it anyway. Chobei's got a hunch that the Tensons got some weak spot around their lower bodies since he sliced Ju there once, and the regeneration thing happened, which left Toma mighty impressed. Before they can take action, though, they run into this monstrous Doshi dude. Turns out, the Tensons sent him and his pals to check out the humans on the island. Doshi demands that Chobei and Toma head back to the pit and become tan, but Chobei ain't having none of that. He straight up attacks the Doshi and plans to use him to find the Tensin. The Doshi ain't got a choice but to defend himself, so he summons his homies, the Sashin. While Toma's busy scrapping with the Sashin, Chobei focuses all his energy on taking down this Doshi guy. But the Doshi thinks he's got it in the bag because Chobei can't wield Tao. He sees a chance to deliver a deadly blow to Chobi's neck, and that's when Toma starts freaking out. He sees his bro lying there, bleeding out and fading fast. And the episode ends here. Thanks for checking out this awesome video. If you're digging what you see, make sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe bell to get even more kick-ass content. So, stay tuned for more videos.